who can actually protect what about the whale? Yeah, the oh, never mind. Oh! That's actually, that's actually, that's actually right. a good choice. Okay, yeah. That's nice against the Harith. You don't have to worry about like, the Mathilda ulting in. Yeah. And then uh, he also has... Seven. Welcome Our to Mobile Legends! Final here. Once again, I'm nice to join you on the desk with Ingon. Woo! And as you see, game one was dominant as ever for Falcons AP Bren. This time, they do a little switcheroo. Look how aggressive Oakwood's being, too. What they call it? The Chogwin? The Chogwin. Master Chogwin again rocking his show. It's funny because prior to the playoffs, yeah. Oakwin wasn't known for using show. Even at the Anara asked uh, Oakwin if he's comfortable with using show. So before the playoffs, we've seen uh, Falcons AP Bren stream. Oakwin was really working on mastering this show, and it seems like he's confident enough to be this aggressive early on in the game. He's pretty much got to be, and at the same time, you know, you have Flap with that Gatakacha that has been a such a, a great pick for a lot of teams all throughout the playoffs. And even, what do we say, I think it was debuted week six or seven of the regular season. No, I think it was earlier with Chuck, no? No, I think it was towards the end. I know it was the second half of the regular season. Because yeah. um, that's when we started to see more of those kind of interesting like Rome picks picked up and now yeah, you the, see them the flex. <laughs> yeah, now they're flex either in the XP lane or they're put in the Rome and part of that again is you have to play against that plus that revitalize because over on the other side for Aurora, you're not going to have that and it was interesting because when you saw the index coming into the game, they had a massive rating, Edward. Okay, now they're going to try and go for Flap. It's easy. Here comes wow. the revitalize. Kyle Feezy goes in. Wanted to go for the kill. We shadow kill. Might be what? able to bring down Demon Kite and the first blood onto Demon Kite. And this is what you were saying, okay, Oakwin? They'll be able to uh, escape there. And this is what you were saying. The revitalize of Flap Tizzy. My so you saw it. Oh no. Uh, Frosty Breeze, Berenje escapes the refrigerant Glacier. Has to use the flicker though. So now Falcons AP Bren, they got the kill, forced yeah. out a lot of resources for Aurora. That's one of those moments, hang on, where you're just like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> you you commit so much to getting a kill there early on. And he still doesn't go down, and then you end up getting counterpunched in the face. And yeah, that's the revitalize in the early game, especially how much healing it does provide. But also the fact that this is just a Gatakacha, and you know that even that extra little bit of uh, tankiness that he has with the emblems that he brought to the table, the firmness is there too. The fight for the turtle. Oh, what a beautiful kick! Plus paired up with the AOG. Few gets the turtle plus the kill onto Demon Kite. Not a good start once again as Edward pops his primal wrath. But look at that, just ganking up oh. on Edward. Falcons AP Bren continuing to extend the lead. Now, this is what's alarming, as what the panel has been mentioning. The spike of Kyle Feezy. When it comes especially past the five minute mark, the Hayabusa is really going to overpower power the Demon Kite. But even prior to that, he's already at 1-0-2. Now Super Marco has to walk away because Dorman goes in with his Zaman Force. Fight him. Paired up with a circling eagle. Now a shutdown kill onto Super Marco. Kyle Fiji wants to go in. Wants to go for the counter win. Gage gonna bring down Dorming though. Be able to escape. That's the trade. Falcons AP Bren are willing Whoa. to take what they want to go for more as Demon Tide punishes. Kyle Tizzy, Owen answers right back with another kill. Few just hiding in the brush, waiting for the perfect moment to stun Renege. And then Falcons AP Bren again. Same story. <laughs> always two steps ahead of Aurora. They're always ready for the response. And that's the, that's the way you have to respect about Falcons AP Bren. Ever since they started their dominant, you know, run throughout the world. And even last year, you know, this is what you saw from the team. And this is what a lot of teams admired from them. Is their rotations, is their responses, the way they counterplay. And, you know, for Super Marco to go down that early on, but then FCAP still gets a lot out of the exchange, that's okay for them because really when you're playing this Hayabusa into this lineup that Rora has, you want to be able to build up, get that momentum going, the snowball, it's already happening for Kyle Teasy, and you can see the way they're playing into that, the way they're taking advantage of that. So if you're Rora and you're looking at how these past couple minutes have gone, then yeah, you really have to get ready to go ahead and start to win some of these fights, win some of these skirmishes early on. Well, how do you do that? Well, you've got that mobility from Ren and Jay. You've got a lot of options to go even with Edward here, but you gotta make sure you have enough firepower. And that's where the main question is right now, because as the lead builds up, you're gonna get out itemized and out damaged. Now they wanna fight with this turtle here. They're all here for this one. As they stand off five members from Rora, five from FCAP, 
looking to feel out the situation here. And really, with this kind of lineup being on, it could be Aurora that starts things up. Okay, here comes the kick once again. Plus the AOG onto the back line for Flap. It's easy. Demon Guy's going to get the turtle, but Frigid Glacier is there. Whoa. Coming in from Falcon's eight weekend friend. Edward, though, with Primal Wrath, going to pop out. The Pride of Vice is going to bring down Few eventually. There it is. Plus the kill onto Flap and to Kyle. Next story, it is Oakwood. Demon Guy working on him. And a double kill for the Smiling Kite. And there you go. Smile on his face, gets the objective, and they get a whole lot more. Now Rora can switch into gear, look to get this tier one turret. That is exactly what they needed to stop F caps, just snowball building up. The best part is they got a mid lane turn it, turret. Kyle TZ doesn't have his purple buff. No casualties this time for Aurora, and also Doming gets a turret down bottom. A huge, huge swing from Aurora. And I hope, I hope that there's an Infinix instant replay because honestly, that was a good catch from Ogwen with a way of the dragon. Unfortunately, they weren't able to burst down Edward. He was still able to use his Primal yep. Wrath, then burst down Few, even with the Pride of Ice. It was more than enough time to bring him down. A catch from Flaptizi onto the back line with the AOG wasn't enough because Falcon's AP brand during that clash, they were separated. They couldn't target, they couldn't lock on anyone from Aurora because Aurora was just literally in a better position for the counter attack compared to Falcons. And that's why I said it comes down to the positioning for them, how they started up. Oh, okay, okay. here comes the certainly Eagle once wow. again. He's gonna work on Flap TZ. Here comes the Revitalize. Might be tacky enough to out sustain this though, but here comes the AOG. He's gonna escape. Edward, Edward was there. With the catch, just waited. Waited for one of his calculated. most familiar rivals. Calculated is the right word for Legend Zero. And a dominating start for Aurora. I literally, like, the way that I saw that in my head is Edward is like, arms open, here I am. Jump on into them. So he's ready for that. Super Marco will go ahead and get a little damage here on that tier two turn in the bottom side. Trying to get something through that. But now the turtle's up here. One for one for both teams, but this one's just going to go over to Aurora very easily. Demon Kai Whoa. clears it up. Demon Kai just continuing to ride with Renegade. And th that's just a statement that Aurora is telling Falcons AP Bren that we're not going to give you an opportunity to counterattack, to come back, because our aggression will continue. Every single time they get a neutral objective, automatically it translates to other objectives, like turret takedowns down bottom into the middle lane, and now the crowd's going wild, I assume. Oh, they're... Yeah. <laughs> They're, they're going in blind right now, so <laughs> that's that's the reactions we have them. Again, right now, they're just waiting here. They're going to have to pull out their phones to hear what's happening, but hey, looks like we're going back to it. Still top side, that tier one goes down. Mid lane, a big part of this focus here. Whoa. You know, the Rora fans are, they're feeling it. They're feeling good about this one, Egon. Now that they have the lead built up, they're working through it. FCAP is the one that has to kind of adjust from this because this is all what we were talking about, even when the panel mentioned that Matilda and everything else, right? You have it. You utilize the fact that you have a circling eagle. You have the guiding wind just like this. Okay. Now that's just to make sure to o uh, let Ogwen go out of position from the brushes that they have. And apart from that, credit to you for a clutch nightmare response. Because right now they're just camping on every open brush that they can find. But, Faga, but Aurora has to watch out for a potential oh. kick coming in from Ogwen off angle though. Now Few has to cast the Frigid uh -oh. Glacier, want to go for the counter attack. AOG coming there, but Ogwen's gonna fall down. They have to walk away. Nightmare Spawn, the Dominator's descent is also there as Flap TC pops his revitalize. They're only gonna lose Ogwen, but this is Aurora maximizing the lead that they've established 12 seconds in. The First Lord is going to spawn, and so far, Aurora's controlling the map and the pace. This is a lot better game for Renegade here. He's yeah. got eight assists right now, and he's doing a lot of work, and that's what he has to do with Matilda. You know, gets that second chance to do it, pulls it off really well so far at this point in the game, and they're following through with it. So, Aurora, they're fighting capabilities when it comes to those, you know, small choke points, even in the jungle. Even if they put pressure on the purple buff, if they want to, or the orange buff, or anywhere, they have this kind of advantage to work around because they can displace themselves or get an angle that FCAP has to respond to. Look at this. Okay. They're just going to drive Falcon's AP friend off the Lord. There's no area for FCAP to even get into because, again, Kyle Teasy, he's not ready for that fight. Neither is the rest of the team here. Yeah. It just shows that Aurora has good 
ground cover that time, and I do agree with what you've been saying for Renegade. I mean, they first pick Matilda onto the blue side, and this is the reason, because it's a mixture of the Hitman and the Heal Man, providing a lot of shields, providing a lot of heals, and at the same time, going for those very aggressive dives, paired up most of the time with Demon Kite. Then once it connects, automatically gonna cast the Spear of Alpha as Kyle TZ just watching as Aurora takes away his precious purple buff. He's gonna wait patiently there because right now, Aurora looking to take some more across the map. That Lord going down the bottom side. Fcap might try to defend here. Okay, here comes Oigi Shadow Kill though. As Kyle TZ goes out, the sustain from Aurora is there. And as you can see, what Yue has been doing, just placing Nightmaric spawn after Nightmaric spawn and all the brushes that he thinks Ogwen will be in. That's why during that prior clash, when Kyle Tizi went in, Ogwen was backing away. He Ogwen had the perfect angle to action. Speaking of... Speaking of Ogwen. Speaking of Ogwen. Chogwen waiting there patiently. An off angle. Lord down still on the bottom side. They might look to take the long trip around right now. Kyle Tz gets spotted out too. Ogwen still waiting patiently. They'll clear out the, the Lord pretty quickly. Again, their lineup from FCAP can do this relatively well, but they might be looking for their own sandwich play. Ogwen, he's gonna get caught off though. Better that he gets on out of there. This was the right idea though for FCAP. They might have to look for something like that in order for this game to turn over in their favor. All the while, what this is doing, Ingon, is letting Super Marco get the items that he needs to see to the point where he has that, what we call, you know, that Nathan bomb, the Super Marco bomb with this, that combination. He's got that Holy Crystal already starting inside Feather Heaven, so he's pretty much online. It's more so surviving these areas against Aurora's lineup. Uh, but the thing is, again, the dive-centric lineup of Aurora is just too much. Might be, able, might be too much later on for Falcons AP Bread once Aurora secures the Lord again. We've been seeing Renegade circling Eagles almost on the offensive end, wanting to go for those crucial uh, damage deals for, for Falcons AP Brand. And the thing is, even if Ogwen manages to find Doming, again, there's Doming's Purify saved up for that perfect moment. And at the same time, the Guiding Wind again from Renegade. A lot of times he has been saving um, Aurora from Falcons AP Brand's counter initiation. And with the kit that Falcons have, they have the AOG, they have the Frigid Glacier. It's surprising that until now, they only have six skills because of the defense Ren well, J is providing. It's a whole lot of utility that they can use, but no in FCAP and the way that they like to approach the game. And it's like, you know, if they don't have to commit it, they don't need to. If it's not going to be a sure thing, then they won't. Yeah. Now that Super Marco picks up the Divine Glaive, they might actually contest this and try to get one of those quick kills if they can. Maybe if it's, an, maybe if it's even an uh, open here to get a kick in the right direction, and they might go for that, unless this just goes in their hands. Lord sitting at half health here, it's gonna go for this reset. We've seen this many times, even yesterday. Oh. We saw some of the longest Lord dances, the new Lord dance, we'll call it. Back between both teams, where they just kind of feel out the area. Big defensive items also being picked up here. Winter crown now for Renegade. So even if they give the go signal, they might just try to go in for a feign. Okay. Play here. Quarter health on the Lord. Okay, they're gonna commit fully on the Lord as Demon Kite secures it. Falcons AP Bren picking their fights for now. They're gonna leave it be, and they will just go for the defense. And this is what I'm saying, man. You pointed this out earlier. That zone defense or the zone options that Rora can play with the fact that they even have UA on the Zask pick. The nightmare spawns alone are enough to kind of keep FCAP from second guessing. And if it doesn't have, it doesn't even need to be all of FCAP. It actually just needs to be Ogwin. Yeah. Whether they're checking the bushes, whether they're just kind of spotting him out so that he can't easily, as easily, get that setup that he's looking for or possibly get a kick that he's looking for. So it kind of spots him out and keeps them at bay. Whereas FCAP has made the decision being like, okay, that's not gonna happen. We're not gonna be able to approach these objectives. We might as well just go for the base defense here. As you were saying, again, Ogwen got spotted out from that brush, specifically from you, and here comes the Lord marching down the bottom lane. They want to burst down the inhibitor, and they will do it successfully. Whoa. Here comes Edward Gold with the Earth Flicker combination. Now going to cast the Primal Wrath, going to bring down Ogwen. Next target is Marco. The Bulletproof has now fallen down. Oh. Aurora evens out the series. Very refined in game number two, Aurora this time around will bring things together and you can hear the crowd of Aurora going right there on the screen. They even out the series one to one.
We knew this was going to be an amazing series, man. Best of seven. We can't have it any other way. We didn't want a 2-0. We wanted the 1-1. And this was, again,